input session this evening we have one input from mr bob shaughnessen mr shaughnessen please uh, I think I have to speak my name. is the green button on Oh, it's bright. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, I can't recall. I think I have to state Just my state name. your name, please. Bob Shaughnessen. Okay, thank you. Um, so I wanted to address the issue of the fire tower lookout uh, playground equipment. I have some concerns regarding that equipment being in, in the proposal being put forward by staff. I can't find any evidence in the report that supports the recommendation to, re to replace the playground equipment. The report indicates, following recent inspections, it was deemed that current, the, the current playground requires replacement due to aging and unsafe features. I note it was indicated to the community and to members of the Recreation and Culture Standing Committee at their most recent meeting, quote, city staff have temporarily closed the playground until a thorough inspection is complete. City staff are working with a third-party playground inspection company to inspect the fire tower lookout playground, end quote. New quote, once the inspection is complete, staff will report upon the findings, then advise on next steps, end quote. So where is this report which makes this recommendation? Under questioning by committee members, it became apparent the information provided by the director was incorrect as the company hadn't been hired at that time. That was three weeks ago. There is no evidence the consultant was subsequently hired. It was noted Elliott Lake has 13 parks with equipment apparently in various states of decay, and this consultant would be reviewing all of these items. The staff proposal put forward without a supporting resolution from the Recreation and Culture Standing Committee does not include any of the results of this inspection by this mysterious third-party playground inspection company. Perhaps it is because they identified repairable solutions when that isn't the priority of municipal staff who want something new. This information should be clearly available for councillors, community members, and local taxpayers so that we can see that there is an actual need to replace the equipment and to confirm it's not just a nice thing to do. I find it unusual that an inspection consultant would limit their comments to aging and unsafe features. Therefore, they should be replaced. What are the specific aging characteristics? Is something rusting? Is things cracking? We don't know. Uh, and what were the specific unsafe features apparently viewed by this professional? Or was that simply a polite way of indicating the equipment wasn't maintained properly? The report also indicates, quote, city staff have collaborated with a park planner End quote. However, no report, recommendation, or correspondence is offered from this mysterious park planner. Who is this individual or firm? Do they have appropriate qualifications? And why is their report or any correspondence supporting the proposal not attached? Why is all of this a secret? I would remind Council that we've seen in the past when somebody gets excited about the possibility of buying something new, they seem to pull out all the stops to ensure people understand the current asset must be destroyed and completely revised. There's no options to repair. We also know we have to be very diligent in ensuring the information we are receiving is accurate. As we saw with the arena, that previous proponents had no hesitation putting false stories into the public regarding their repairability. This council has declared their commitment to transparency. Once council and citizens have had an opportunity to review these reports that are apparently being made, then a proper decision can be made with respect to removing and replacing the playground equipment. With the combination of infrastructure failures, the arena, the swimming pool, hillside, we are now looking at going into debt where previously our reserves were provi providing substantial annual revenues through interest and investments. We have to be diligent ensuring municipal expenditures are targeted toward priority necessary expenditures. Every dollar saved reduces the debt load we have to take on. With that in mind, 
if it becomes necessary to remove the equipment based on recommendations of the inspection consultant, then council should review the need to replace with, the, with an eye to the necessity of the asset. The fire tower lookout was developed as a tourism attraction and we market it as a tourism attraction. The attraction is based on providing a 180 degree panoramic view of our scenic area. In addition, the Fire Rangers Heritage Center is included as an educational component of the facility. The playground equipment is not a necessary component of this tourism facility. Tourism visitation will not be impacted. Somebody isn't going to get all excited in Sudbury to travel to Elliott Lake to go play on the playground at the fire tower. Some have noted, however, the playground equipment is currently enjoyed by residents with children and a car to access the site. It is noted in the report, the purchase of a play structure aligns with the city's commitment to promoting the health, well-being, and social development of the community. That being the case, would we not consider placing the equipment at a location accessible to all children in the community? It is clearly noted in the report that the purpose of the equipment, quote, is an investment that will enrich the lives of children and families for years to come, end quote. Its purpose has nothing to do with tourism, and staff's report clearly acknowledges this. I have not noted any effort to explore funding for this project, seeing as we will soon be looking at equipment in 13 different parks. It would be appropriate to develop a plan which addresses all of this equipment and make every effort to get the support of the federal and provincial governments. I've searched through projects approved by NOHFC in 2023 and note the following contributions, which include purchasing playground equipment. And it's not a comprehensive list. September 8th, $197,703 for the search mount, just up the road here, local services board to revitalize their community center with structural and security upgrades and new fitness and playground equipment. January 12, 2023, they announced 81,000 for the local services board of Holleberg to renovate the Holleberg Community Center. And that chairman indicated with these funds, we were able to repair, improve, and make accessible our community hall, as well as purchase new play structures to improve our community park. October 17, 2023, they announced $161,000 to Big Grassy First Nation to replace playground structures at <laughs> Big uh, Migabo <laughs> School. Sorry. <laughs> uh, February 7th, the town of Fort Francis is receiving $499,000 in NOHFC funding to refurbish Legion Park, a popular, family friendly outdoor green space. The refurbishment project includes building a splash pad, installing a new playground and park lighting, and providing accessible walkways and washrooms. The Rural Enhancement Funding Stream of NOHSC will fund, quote, incremental improvements, repairs, and or renovations to improve and extend the useful life of capital assets, including social and recreational facilities, municipal assets, and community halls that contribute to a healthy and vibrant community. NOHFC offers 75% funding to municipalities with less than 30,000. You may also want to take a look at the Ontario Trillium Foundation. Um, they provide capital funding to communities with a population less than 20,000. I have significant concerns with the purchasing process proposed, which has no competitive elements associated with it. Rather than following a process which clearly identifies what we want, such as through development of a tender or a request for proposals, the city's process resembles a shopping trip, which developed a commitment to purchase the pretty product at whatever price from the salesperson who apparently actually knows what we need. I will make a future presentation to council regarding your procurement policy. I note the quotation provides no detail regarding the equipment to be purchased. The proposed contract is not attached to the bylaw, so there's no way to determine what council has, is being asked to agree to. Perhaps council seen the, the, the contract? Citizens haven't. 
it cannot be determined whether the contract identifies specific pieces of equipment. I would hope the Council will defer the purchase of this item until appropriate processes can be undertaken to determine the need for this particular item as well as the needs of the other 13 parks. Appropriate competitive processes should be undertaken so that it can be demonstrated we are receiving best value. Funding should be fully explored to reduce the net cost to taxpayers. Additionally, creative thinking should be applied to the fire tower site to determine if another feature would be beneficial. Now, councillors will recognize that my comments are based on the report as published late Thursday afternoon with the agenda. The world changed, however, on Friday morning as staff from the city raced up to the fire tower to remove the equipment. There's no emergency announced, no closures announced. However, the fire tower gates were closed to ensure members of the public did not witness the removal. I went up to the tower early Friday afternoon to undertake my due diligence before I submitted to council and saw the closed but not locked gate. I thought some mischievous individual may have been having some fun and closed the gates. The lock was clearly hanging there in a closed position and could have easily been applied if it was the city that closed the gates. There are no signs indicating the facilities was closed while the recreation department removed the equipment. So I opened the gate and went up to the tower to discover staff finishing up the job. It was clear to me they could have simply cordoned off the area they were working in and allowed public access to continue to the rest of the facility. It appears staff could not bother waiting for a bunch of elected citizens to make a decision. And of course they had to consider the possibility that if an actual professional was to undertake the inspection, they may develop solutions to repair things. Members of the public may have also viewed the equipment and wondered why it was being replaced. I get the feeling staff recognized they screwed up with the arena and swimming pool and should have just demolished both buildings while they could. Then they wouldn't have to deal with all of these maintain and repair issues. Sorry, Mr. Shaughnessy, yes. you've had more than 10 minutes. Thank you. I'll, I'll com I've completed it there. I would certainly encourage council to defer this proposal until you've got, and citizens have useful information. Um, I do have some comments about, uh, regarding the procurement policy. The, Perhaps for another agenda. Yeah, We're not yeah. discussing that this evening. No, but Mr. Deepart fully did indicate at the last steering committee meeting that there were other ways um, for council uh, to look at this rather than going through the RFP process and stuff like that. The procurement policy does allow you to use the emergency method. And I think that's the, emergency, that's the method being used here now. All of a sudden, three weeks after the steering committee meeting, and one day after the report was put in. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Shaughnessy. All in favor? None are opposed. That is carried. 8.2, report from the Director of Recreation and Culture regarding Fire Tower Lookout Playground. At the May 23rd, 2024 meeting of the Accessibility Advisory Committee, the following resolution was passed. That Accessibility Advisory Committee recommend to Council Option 2 for the Fire Tower Lookout Playground. We have a motion that the purchase of a playground from CRCS for the Fire Tower Lookout in the amount of $102,415.20, including installation, be approved, and that the funds be drawn from the Buildings and Facilities Reserve and that the appropriate bylaw be passed. We have a mover. Councillor Lefebvre, seconded. Councillor Bull. Mr. De Bortoli, please. Yes, thank you. Through your worship, um, <clears throat> I'm just presenting the report on behalf of Mrs. Kluke, who, uh, Ms. Kluke, sorry, who wasn't able to be with us tonight. Uh, I believe she's captured uh, the detail of the report in terms of what the recommendation is, the process to arrive at the selection of the playground for the fire tower lookout and the means of procurement in which it was uh, acquired. Um, if there's 
more detail that's required uh, in terms of the uh, of the report I will try to answer it however if it, we get into certain specifics we may have to uh, defer until at which point in time Ms. Kluke would be available to provide you with more detail okay thank you Councillor Bull sorry Thank you, Your Worship. I do have uh, a few questions, and I think Ms. Kluke would be the one to ask the questions of. And I know, she, well, I know she's not here, but uh, I think maybe we should wait. Uh, myself, I don't think it's in any rush now. The piece of equipment is gone, apparently. Uh, do we need a, a piece of equipment up there, playground? Uh, equipment for kids when their parents are up there to play and the, the adults have uh, the opportunity to look around or do whatever they want to do up there I think the playground should be up there some kind of facility for the kids to keep them busy and enjoying the time up there uh, I think part of the and, and with regard to the structure I think part of the problem or misconception that people have is that this is just a accessibility only uh, playground structure it's not it's a piece of playground equipment to replace what was up there but it has more accessibility features than what the original piece of equipment had and it was had been there for 34 years I think it's the original piece of equipment so the comments that people are making that it should have been uh, repaired and that I no, that piece of equipment has seen its day uh, even as an inspector I probably would have failed it so I think that uh, we should wait and maybe talk to Ms. Kluke when she gets back. Okay, thank you, Councillor Bull. Councillor Seidel. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, due to the fact that I'm sure many of us have uh, questions for Ms. Kluke, I would like to put a motion on the floor to defer this to the next uh, council meeting. And I so move. Okay. Do we? Do we need it? Do we have a seconder? Councillor Flintoff. Um, so do we want to comment on that or do we have to vote on the motion, correct? Right? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. So you, need, you can discuss only uh, whether or not to defer. Okay. I, th I think we're all in agreement. We don't have enough information. And we're not going to get any more information if we ask questions. So let's have a vote on the motion to defer. All in favor? Okay, none are opposed. That's carried. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Recreation and Culture Standing Committee. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, roll call. All committee members are present. Are there any declarations of conflict of interest? Going once, going twice. There are none. Minutes of the previous meetings. Could I have a motion that the following minutes be adopted from May 6, 2024? Councillor Flinoff, Councillor Lefebvre, are there any comments or questions, concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? That is carried, thank you. Uh, number five, public input session. Uh, before we start that, I'd just like to read out a few rules. Uh, Public input session is available to those who have pre-registered to speak. Each speaker will be allotted two minutes to provide their input to council or committee before we move on to debating the agenda items. Please ensure that all comments are focused on topics that appear on tonight's agenda. To help us run efficiently and fairly, it's important that we adhere to these guidelines. Speakers who go off topic or exceed their allotted time may respectfully be asked to conclude their remarks. Thank you for all for your cooperation. We look forward to hearing your insights tonight. Uh, first person to speak, Mr. Blake, would like to speak to item 7.4. Mr. Blake. Green lights on. Thanks for the opportunity to speak uh, to the committee this afternoon. My name is Laurie Blake, and I'm going to present a view from the fire tower. Sometimes the view is better from above, and 
at a distance as we get too close to a subject to make solid objective decisions. Here's my view. May 6th of the Rec and Culture Committee meeting, the Rec Director in her presentation informed committee members that a third party playground inspector would review the overall playground equipment and provide a report on all city play playground infrastructure and identify reports. Committee Chair Ball said even though as a registered inspector in his career, it would be a positive initiative to have a third party to conduct the inspection and would provide a fix for safety concerns. Mayor Wannan mentioned sooner th th the whole process would be better sooner than later, but it supported the concept and Mayor Wannan mentioned it would be able to follow the set city procurement procedure, albeit it would take a little longer. He stated it was important to do it right. Mayor Wannan asked the question and staff required as to whether or not inspections were logged. The rec director confirmed they were but no report on the inspections uh, were shared. The next time the topic surfaced was at a May 23rd um, Accessibility Advisory Committee endorsing option one being a proposed presentation to Council May 27th Acting Interim CAO Di Bartoli tabled the report, but the Rec Director wasn't in attendance and the Acting Interim CAO expre expressed reluctance to go into any detail as he was not the author of the document. Councillor Bull had questions as it appeared others as well, but no one was available to answer them. Councillor Sedell tabled a motion to defer and the motion passed. A very prudent response by Councillor Sedell and Council. The initiative now raises its head again based supposedly how on the urgency of Council stating five options suggesting they choose which one they prefer. I don't see any report from the third party expert that examines the playground infrastructure examination and needs requirement that illustrates the fire tower playground was the pressing need instead to address the overall need to the community. Having said that, with a proposal there is no supporting documentation with regards to usage or exit surveys supporting visitor experience and expectations at the fire tower. This begs the question back to accessibility. Is this the best decision for value for money for the community and utilization? There's no report to support this. Is it being placed in this location because there was one there before? Or would it serve the kids of the community better if it was someplace else? It'd be a win-win. Support visitors to allow their kids to let off steam and easily accessible for kids in the community. It becomes a hanging question. The presentation does suggest that the council needs to decide which option they want to choose. This single source is not following city procurement protocols. I respect that council has valued experience in your respective fields. What I don't know if they are trained in playground equipment specialties. Isn't that the role of the Dep department recreation staff for their expertise based on a broad range of knowledge, expertise, consultation and reports to assist council? in understanding and making knowledgeable decisions. None have been included. Now I wish to speak to community optics. My understanding is the price tag is 102,000. Uh, sorry, Mr. Blake, your two minutes is up. You want to wind up? Uh, can I? Quick as you can, please. Then I guess my issue is that we're spending $102,000 at a time when our focus is really on community. So my concern is optics uh, as far as how the community would, would view that we're taking 102 out of reserves, building reserves, which could be used for the arena, and we're going to put a playground in somewhere. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Shaughnessy would like to speak also to item 7.4. I'd like to remind you, Mr. Shaughnessy, in two minutes, if you could, please. There we go. Um, my main concern today, uh, and I'm, I'm speaking to the fire tower equipment, my main concern today is the process followed for this staff proposal. I'm very pleased that council members on this committee are able to view potential options to address the removal of the equipment. I believe this provides an excellent example 
of how steering committees or standing committees should be used to determine budget submissions to the ad hoc budget committee. With the provision of options, councillors and the public are able to see what's possible and have a fruitful process discussion. The project is submitted for budget approval and all are aware of the expectations. That doesn't happen now. The current procurement policy provides no role for a standing committee to review any decisions by staff prior to bringing a proposal to council. Once council has set a budget for an item, there is no defined role for the standing committee, council, or members of the public to have any input on implementation of the budget, and so we have seen a few examples now where council sets a budget and suddenly a full sole source project is presented to council with no possibility of input or participation by citizens, steering committee members, or other potential vendors. It's clear no options provided this afternoon are likely to be available during this tourism season. And so you have the opportunity of requiring a much more constructive process generating support for the final project. Staff have indicated to this standing committee that they had intended to have a third party inspection company review. I'm gonna bypass that part because it was already discussed. Um, it, in any case, it sounds like there's a number of pieces of equipment throughout the community that are approaching or have reached their replacement criteria. This is an opportunity to come up with a proper plan for replacement of this equipment based on receiving competitive proposals. I would also note that it's an opportunity for staff to develop creative ways to engage, engage parents and children in the selection of equipment to be finally used by the children. Staff should be directed to develop a request for proposals and to research pot potential providers, including those companies currently involved in your canoe pro procurement program, uh, but as well as others not involved in that program to ensure we receive the best value going forward. I also think that this issue has shown that the city has no constructive manner to ensure opportunities for public and councillor input other than a last gasp final attempt when a full proposal is finally submitted to council. There's no process to determine what will be put forward to an ad hoc budget committee and no process for citizen or councillor input identified in the procurement policy. So there's nothing before the budget and there's nothing after the budget for input. That means it's zero. So currently it appears staff have all the cards. It's council's job to support staff when they play those cards and take responsibility for the result, whatever that might be. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Shaughnessy. Uh, Mr. Thomas would like to speak to items 7.2, 7.3, and 7.4. And I remind you again, two, two minutes. Two's all I got, okay. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, good to see you again, good afternoon. My stuff's pretty brief. Um, seven, I'll back up. For the last couple of years, I've been asking if anybody's listening. And you were here for that when they were given their presentation. My, <clears throat> my understanding of what I'm seeing in 7.2 and 7.3 is that somebody was listening. And I'm very happy to see that. I think it's a tremendous opportunity for us to further our goals with making our trails and, and surrounding Elliott Lake tourism more attractive, more steadfast. And it's going to cement the revitalization and the reinvigoration of that industry in our community. So I applaud that. I look forward to how much that's moving forward. The only fly I see in the ointment is we have three or four organizations that have been playing in that field for a couple of decades. And kudos to Jack and to Council for making this come forward. But I think that the cross country ski and bike club is going to need about 30 or 40 more volunteers. To, to do the lifting, and I think the city is going to have to show some foresight in terms of equipment and expenses and fuel and things like that because that stuff doesn't get done for free. So I welcome it, I'm happy to see it, and congratulations, and I look forward to speaking more to come. With 7.4, <clears throat> to not be redundant, I'll keep it sweet. I am an accessibility expert. And I don't use that word lightly. The fire tower was a choice location in the last administration to move sensory equipment to that location. It was resoundingly rejected by the community for valid reasons. 
not what you're considering, but there's no access to that location by mass transit. Over 90% of the youth and families that would participate in that exercise would not be able to go there. It was a bad idea then. I think it's a worse idea now. I have an eight-year-old granddaughter. I would never take her up to the fire tower to do that. I, can't, I know many people with challenged children. It's harder than taking my dog out on a rough day to manage that. That is not the place for that equipment. From your perspective and a budgetary consideration, that amount of money would be a colossal waste on a piece of property that we can use three months out of the year that has no relative access for the majority of the community. That money would be better spent locally in town where we have the infrastructure to service it. Additionally, <clears throat> you're faced with five choices. Of all the hard work you've done to save money and to stretch it as far as it would go, I would recommend option four or option five. Everything else is a colossal waste of everything you've put in the bank to save. Best bang for your buck. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. 7.4, report from the Director of Recreation and Culture regarding fire tower playground replacement. I need a mover and a seconder. The council decide on a replacement plan for the playground at the fire tower lookout and that staff return to council with a purchasing contract for the equipment based on the approved recommendation. Mover and a seconder. Councillor Flinoff, Councillor Lefebvre, Ms. Kluke. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, um, yeah, at the May 3rd meeting, uh, we were... I proposed uh, the unsatisfactory grades that we received for the, the playground up there and the requirement for, for it to be removed. Uh, following that meeting, we received um, just internal direction to, to remove that due to the health and safety concerns. Uh, following that, based on some of the urgency we received at that meeting, I worked to propose to prepare a playground with some of the playground inspectors and was able to find one that could provide a playground with a turnover of four to six weeks compared to other ones that were 10 plus weeks. So this, we worked to put the playground at the May 25th council meeting, which would, if should everything had been approved, it would be delivered and installed by the end of July. Um, just with the deferral, we're returning back with just some different options or additional options to consider for this for the playground replacement, uh, should there be any at the fire tower lookout. So options one would be the, the initial playground that was presented at the May 25th meeting. And this is a playground that meets the AODA compliance regula through <laughs> regulations. Also, it was run through the accessibility committee and was the playground that was recommended from that committee. Some of the points that they liked were the, the ramps that were included in the playground and with addition to wider stairs and additional hand grab bars. There's also a metal slide that you would see in this playground, which is beneficial for individuals that have cochlear implants or hearing aids so, so that there's no static for these slides. So it just meets the AODA compliance in other, in other factors than what we have in other community playgrounds. This second option is the Rube, Ruby Goldberg Miracle Machines. These are some sensory equipment that were also received well and presented at the Accessibility Committee. Um, it was present, presented with a different uh, park option, but the committee did really like, like them and um, they have been received well from a lot of accessibility committees across Canada from what I have heard and uh, have become quite a popular piece of equipment. The third option is a a playground, um, a smaller playground, or ninja ropes course is just a cheaper um, option for us to install should there want to be a playground replacement type item at the park. Option four is an interactive art piece similar to something we did with the, the arts community in town in 2023 where we installed signs like that Hart Elliott Lake sign or the interactive head in a hole. We'd work with this with this group to form some sort of piece that can be installed there in that place with a budget of around $20,000. And then option five is the last one, which would be no replacement. So all options have uh, different budgets listed. Um, they all can vary depending on the number of 
miracle machines or equipment that we would want. But um, yeah, I'm just I'm open for for any uh, questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, looking at all the options, uh, and I know the accessibility committee liked option one, but I just point out it's not a accessibility structure itself. It's a playground structure with accessibility features so that whoever goes up there and wants to use the playground will be able to. It'll have the proper base for, accessib for accessibility for people to get there. Uh, number two, the option two, the Ruby Goldberg mach Miracle Machines, I think they would be better off if we were to get any of those to put in the parks in town one at, especially one at Westview Park or one of the other out of the other 13 parks where people have access to them as for the other options I think option three is well if we pick one of those we're going to be hammered because it's not accessibility accessible so and number four is not something people can take pictures with but I think we need something up there that will keep it children entertained while they're, they're up there and the parents will have time to look at the views and, and take in everything that they can see up there. As for the uh, sole sourcing, the JCI, do they check other companies before that or is JCI just a sole source company that is, you know, a source saying? Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair. It, yeah, it's through the canoe procurement uh, plan. So they have a tender themselves and people submit their proposals to it. So there, there were other vendors as well that submitted um, in, in discussing with some of them, the wait times were very long to produce. And that's why we narrowed it down to, to this one, which is the Little Tykes commercial brand. And it, had, it has the quickest turnaround. So four to six weeks uh, ship time. And then the company would install it within that week of delivery so that's is why so yeah there was other options but they that we could went to and we've spoke to but it's 12 plus weeks for for some of these other options okay thank you uh any other comments or questions councillor flintoff uh thank you mr chair uh more of a uh, first, very good report, Ms. Kluke. You've given us a lot to think about. I don't think at this committee we, Councillor Flintoff, has to say, well, I like option three, I like option one. I think our objective here is, okay, we have five options to make a decision. We need to make a decision. What are we doing up at the lookout tower? One, two, three, four, or five. So what I'm taking from this is we're to say, we take this recommendation, we take it up to all of council, and then that's the night that we should make our decision on whether or not we're recommending one or three or five. I'm pretty sure that's what our goal is here today. It's not to, to take an, a numbered option up to council. Now, if I'm wrong, somebody can let me know, but what I'm gathering is we're to take this report up to council, and then council will decide which one we're doing. Yeah, yeah, through you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, that's, I believe, an option. What you can do, if there was something I think you're passionate about, you could mm -hmm. choose choose one. But, yeah, you can definitely make your discussions and then have that final conversation at council with everyone to choose. Okay. So go ahead, Mr. DiBertoli. Oh, sorry. I just Mr. Like I was the chair. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Through you to uh, the remainder of uh, the committee. Um, just like to bring up a couple of points that uh, have come up uh, through the discussions regarding this particular uh, item. Uh, one is that, um, you know, and thank you very much for your public input. Uh, it's, it's insightful and it's useful. And it, it helps us to, to do a better job at times. Um, so basically, uh, in terms of what we've heard today, in terms of what's before you, uh, we, ha we have a decision to make as, as to how we're going to proceed with this area that was once um, housed a, a playground, okay? Um, based on some of the comments we heard today, 
you know, uh, the, the, concerning the budget and the amount of the item in question, um, particularly in, in terms of, of public input to budget process. I think, you know, uh, perhaps there's something that we have to look at going forward in terms of, uh, you know, inclusion of public input uh, and improve our way that we include the public to provide input during our budget process. So, so this is a takeaway that I'm, I'm, I'm getting from, from the input that we received today. Um, again, you have five options in front of you. Uh, again, we need to decide what is this exactly that we are going to, uh, what our goal is for that, for that location in terms of it being a tourist attraction and what we can do to sustain it as such and, and provide convenience to people who are, who are attending. Um, so to conclude, I guess, do you have to make a decision on this right away? Um, the answer is probably no. I think maybe some time to take into account what we've heard this afternoon uh, and decide what it is that we actually want to do with that place uh, in terms of, of enhancing its, its experience. That would be something to, uh, to consider and chew on and then com come back with some sort of plan to, uh, that would be you know, acceptable. Just a comment. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I know we don't have to make a, a recommendation, but I just thought I'd let where I what I thought of about all the options. So, anybody else want to make a comment, Councillor Lefebvre? Thank you, Chair. Through you, um, I think originally when this came, um, it's been my experience in this community that we always throw band aids at things. So we knew the equipment was faulty let's go ahead and replace it. But since then, having had a lot of conversations with people in town, knowing we are cash strapped, knowing that we don't have numbers to back how much we are spending. Um, I mean, I would, is this really the most prudent amount of money to be spending for that location? I guess I would concur with that. Okay, thank you. Any other, Councillor Morissette? Through your worship. <clears throat> Um, I've been looking around at the different playgrounds around town when I drive and I barely see any of the kids using, you know, the playgrounds that we have already in the city. And I'm just wondering if it's worth the 102000 plus to put some playground when really people going to the lookout tower is for the scenery and all of that. And do we need to keep the kids occupied? They're going to have to keep an eye on the kids if they don't want to watch the scenery. So, in my opinion, I th uh, I think spending one hundred and two thousand dollars for this uh, is is not a good idea. I would forego the playground completely, and maybe take that hundred thousand and put it towards the pavilion, Westview Park and get that repair where I think there's going to be more use there than at the um, lookout tower. That's my opinion on the subject and I would vote for number five. Okay, thank you Councillor Morissette. Any other comments or? Councillor Flinoff? Uh, thank you Mr. Chair. I didn't think we we're going to get into the heavy duty tonight but that's a uh, that's a uh, a very important piece of our tourism. We advertise it. We have it everywhere. To just leave it empty and blank, I mean, it, it, I totally disagree with that. As to do, do one, two, three, or four, I, I don't know if I could figure, do that decision. If we do anything, I'm agreeing with uh, Councillor Bull. I think we either do it right, we uh, two and three, are sort of well we're putting something up there or at least do four where there's they can do nice pictures I mean I see people at the beach around that sign all the time doing pictures at sunlight or you know but uh, to say it doesn't need nothing I told I don't really agree with that we we should put something up there I just don't know budget wise for me to give a recommendation today that's why I mentioned earlier about 
once we go to council. Um, that's my input. I'm down to one or four, so, but I got to sleep on it. <laughs> okay, thank you. And uh, another oh, councilor Fave. Thank you, Chair Three. I would agree with you, Charlie. I think if we could possibly get some options from the arts community to say like different ideas, that might be another way of approaching this. Um, I think you know the, the spending of the money on the playground. Is there an option for us to use that money, do something else for that area? And there's or is if we want to spend the two hundred and two because it is in the budget. Is there options on where else in the community we could be spending that money? Okay, thank you. I don't know. I, I've been around town quite a bit, and I've seen the playgrounds being used quite often. Uh, Kiwanis is usually packed with kids, uh, Paris and Axmith, Roman in particular. So I think playgrounds are a good thing, and it keeps the kids active and doing all their jumping around and swinging off the monkey bars or whatever they're called nowadays. And, and I think kids enjoy that kind of stuff. Uh, as for whether it goes back up at the fire tower, well, like, like Councillor uh, Flinoff said, that'll be up to Council to decide whatever route Council decides they want to do. So for now, I think we'll just send it to Council and uh, have the, a fuller debate there, I'm sure, with the other members present. Is there any other comment? Mayor Wanna? Uh Thank you through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, during the public input, there seemed to be some confusion as to what happened with the equipment. Is there an easy explanation as to why, after the last meeting, everything came down quickly? Perhaps, Mr. Di Bertoli? Yes, uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, based on the reports and the, and the information I received, um, the decision was made to remove the piece of equipment as it, it was beyond the state of repair, as, as I understood. And I figured, and, this, and I'll take full responsibility for this, rather than have another orange barrier up around a piece of our equipment, that the best thing to do would be to remove it. Okay, thank you. Um, so that was a safety decision for the public um, based on a number of people's opinion that the equipment was not salvageable and was unsafe. Um, and that was probably where we were leaning when we were discussing options for this playground. Um, personally, it would be nice to have a very good overall plan before going forward for this area. You know, we're talking about these trails and the trail systems. Um, some of them definitely crisscross and meet up there. In my dream, dream world, you know, I can picture the cross country ski and bike club having mountain bike races set up there that could be your starting point and have a little shack set up there um you know and then in the big grand scheme of things maybe some olympic training around here so um for me i'm not sure where i sit i have to talk to some more people and i'm happy to take the time and think about it and and if we're bringing it forward to council, it's it's for everybody to decide as well. So that's where I stand. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? No, I think it was a good idea to take that structure down. It, I think, I believe that was the original structure when the lookout tower was constructed in... 79? No, 90... 99, 98 maybe. Uh, I had the date. Now you got me double thing. Anyways, so and, and and when you look at a playground structure, the the uh, the inspection covers a lot of things. It looks after strangling and tank strangling options where kids uh, drawstrings could get caught in a gap on there, and it's actually happened in some playgrounds down south. Uh, you got to look at the sharp edges, and you can't just go up there and tack something on there, weld it, and try and make it safe again without making it sure it's up to standards again. So I think it was a good idea that the structure was taken down. And as to what it gets replaced with, well, council will have to decide that. I don't know, whenever it gets to council, I guess. So uh, that's it for my comments. 
All right, can I have a, a vote then? All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Uh, there is no presentation. So I'm just going to, Councillor Bull read this before the last uh, committee meeting. Uh, before we begin our public input session this afternoon, this evening, I'd like to remind everyone of the guidelines outlined in our procedural bylaw. Public input session is available to those who have pre-registered to speak. Each speaker will be allotted two minutes to provide their input to council or committee before we move on to debating the agenda items. Uh, please ensure that all comments are focused on topics that appear on the agenda. And to help us run efficiently and fairly, it's important that we adhere to these guidelines. Speakers who go off topic or exceeded their allotted time may be respectfully asked to conclude their remarks. Uh, I wish to thank you all for your co cooperation. Um, so this evening, there are three public inputs. I will start with um, a written submission from Ms. Leona Matisse uh, regarding item 8.4, uh, the fire tower, fire tower playground replacement. So Ms. Leona Matisse wrote, the goal of an accessible and inclusive playground is to allow all children, regardless of ability, to fully participate and enjoy the playground experience. The report from the Director of Recreation and Culture mentions that to ensure accessibility compliance, staff presented two options for assessment by the Accessibility Advisory Committee on May 23, 2024, which apparently only addressed the combinations of play pieces at the actual playground site, leaving out the barriers children and their caregivers will encounter trying to access it. In order to achieve the goal, the overall accessibility of the fire tower location needs to be considered before a realistic and beneficial decision can be made. The fire tower location is isolated and accessible only by personal vehicle, which excludes those without a driver's license and or vehicle due to no accessible public transit. Because it is located at the highest point in the immediate Elliott Lake area, the parking lot and sidewalk have steep slopes and cross slopes, making it very difficult and dangerous for persons with disabilities and their caregivers to <coughs> excuse me, negotiate. If accessible public transit were available, there is no obvious level spot to drop off and pick up patrons who are disabled. There are no accessible trails for walk-in out access, access to the fire tower as an alternative for disabled persons that enjoy walking and hiking. Playgrounds generate excitement noise, and a certain amount of confusion. Even with diligent supervision, the fire tower location is mostly hard surfaces and accidents will happen. An emergency plan is another consideration. It may seem over the top, but if the playground is offered as accessible and inclusive, how emergency services are contracted, contacted, uh, the minimum and maximum response times, and how emergency responders access the site become important questions. The other attractions that the fire tower has to offer are not, for the most part, accessible. Children get bored or tired and want their change and want to change their focus to another activity and the offerings at the fire tower do not allow for this. It decreases the amount of fun associated with a visit there and may over time reduce the patronage of a playground renovated at considerable cost. Uh, respectfully, Leona Matisse. Um, second, Mr. Mike Thomas would like to speak to item 7.2 and 8.4. Mr. Thomas. Mr. Mayor, members of council, good to see you. Thank you for the, the warning in advance. I'll try to keep under that. Thank you for reading that letter. That covers a lot of what I would have said. My, my reason for being here this evening in a brief statement is to discuss perceptions and authorities. Some are continuous, some are changing. And with many of the items on the agenda tonight and on the agenda every Monday night, the perception is that the best decisions are being made for the benefit of the entire community. And I believe that with all of my heart. I know you do. The authority part of it is that you're mandated by the provincial government 
just the same as 443 other municipalities, to use the rules and everything to the best advantage come to the right conclusion. With that being said, my issue with 7.2 is not anything other than there's three parties to an agreement that's a municipal capital facility that's covered by three pieces of legislation. And it serves our community well. It's a very important part of it. The elevator has been out of service for quite some time. That has been a habitual problem since before your tenure. You're signing on to a lease this evening that does not address that. However, in every lease that you sign, there's a statement in there that says that all parties will be obligated by the laws and regulations of the province of Ontario. And that puts our city on the hook for being responsible for obligations for facilities like that. And that's true in every facility we're talking about. Every single lease, every single contract, every single management agreement, memorandum of understanding, it says that in every one. So that's why I bring it up. With regards to item 8.4, I did attend the standing committee meeting and five of seven of you were there and decided that the best thing to do was to forward it to tonight. And I respect that. Beyond what Ms. Matisse had said, I'll focus on what Councillor Moore said, offered at the committee meeting. And it was a wise suggestion and very astute and, and timely. And what Councillor Lefebvre said at that meeting was we need to plan better. We need, we need to spend more effort in how we're going about these things. And the CAO even referenced that public engagement would have been helpful or could be helpful. That gets to the perceptions part. With 8.4, really, as nice as it would be and as wonderful of a piece it would be to show for our city, that kind of resources could be spent better in town where people will use it all the time. And that was the counselor's suggestion, and that is my suggestion, and that's a lot of people's suggestion that we all talk to every day. And I wish that you would come to that conclusion. It's not the, it's not the greatest one, but it's the logical step. My last comments, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for your indulgence, is the one agreement where it's about managerial non-union staff. Now, I, res I, I watch what you do all the time. That came through a meeting. I, I believe it went into closed session a while ago. It would have been nice. Sorry, i got to interrupt. Which item is that? Uh, non-union employment policy revision from 1989. I believe it's 2464, the bylaw. Did he register for that one? No, Mr. Mayor, I don't believe I'll it. I'll indulge you this time. You got less than a minute, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate it. The point is not to be critical. Let me gather my thoughts. The point was it's a well needed exercise that has to be done. It's required, probably legislatively. It would have been beneficial for the perception of our leaders in our community if a short staff memo would have accompanied it on the agenda saying this is what we're going over, this is why we're passing the bylaw. As a result of closed session, a direction was given to staff so that it be brought forward to council and passed at the next meeting. Short and sweet, it's public, it's out there. Because I know full well that none of this is going on in other than an upright fashion. But the perception the core constituency trust you with all of their being. I trust you. There, there's a perception that we don't have to just advocate to the people who agree with us or who believe in us. We need to advocate to everybody, and I think that would be helpful. That is my submission, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so our third public input session is Ms. Stella Waddington, who would also like to speak to item 8.4. Uh, 
Uh, welcome, Ms. Waddington. Thank you. Um, I would like to speak about the playground at the Fire Trial Lookout. Um, I was at the accessibility meeting where they discussed it, um, and that was a long time ago now. It was six weeks ago. And there were three options available, and as far as I could understand, they were from the same company. And um, I didn't see how they worked. The, the, you know, there was no children playing, demonstrating the equipment. It was just the equipment. And the last time I was in a playground was like over 30 years ago, so it looks completely different to me. And um, the whole meeting was pretty quick. It lasted about 27 minutes. So the demonstration wasn't really very clear and very good. Um, and so I wanted to see what the old uh, playground looked like, because apparently I, I heard it was um, dangerous, you know, for children to use. That's why they're updating it. So we went the next day, and the gates were locked. And apparently the gates were locked because they were dismantling the old playground. So we didn't get to see what the old one looked like. And so that was six weeks ago. So there's been no playground at all for the past six weeks. And this is summertime when you want visitors to come here. And then um, where, okay, visitors, you know, where are they going to stay? We only have one hotel. And I have friends in Toronto and they say it's too far to drive with two small children in the back of the car, you know, coming from Toronto. Um, you know, it's, it's a long drive for adults, but when you've got two children, it's even more trying. And this is why they're putting the playground up. It's one of the attractions. Um, so now I, I presume that if it's approved tonight, it will take um, some weeks to install. So in other words, we'll be lucky if we see it by September and then the season's closing down. So it's not going to be much use for this year. And at the previous accessibility meeting, there was a lady who spoke about um, the sidewalks in Elliott Lake, and uh, she wanted them more accessible. And I hope that um, the men and the workers that are doing the sidewalks on Hill Hillside North uh, are, are putting a lip in so we can get up and down with our walkers and wheelchairs, because that was that lady's point. And I haven't heard anything about that since. And that about wraps it up. <laughs> okay, thank you, Ms. Waddington. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, item six. 8.4, report from the Director of Recreation and Culture regarding Fire Tower Playground replacement. At the July 3rd, 2024 Recreation and Culture Committee meeting, the following resolution was passed uh, that Council decide on a replacement plan for the playground at the Fire Tower Lookout, and that staff return to Council with a purchasing contract for the equipment based on the approved recommendation. I'm going to pass this on to Ms. Kluke before I make a motion. Ms. Kluke. Uh, thank you through uh, you your worship yeah um staff are are seeking s some direction or approval for uh, i guess provided five different options for the fire tower lookout replacement um one option option one sees a park that was presented at the accessibility committee meeting and was forwarded and and it's just um, part of the, to be AODA compliant that we, we meet that step. So it's not necessarily in a, deemed an accessible park, but it has the accessible features. And, and that's what, uh, to echo what uh, Councillor Bull stated at the Reckon Culture, it's, it has the features of an accessibility, so it meets the requirement at, uh, based on the AODA compliant requirements. So option two is the Ruby Goldberg Miracle Machines. These are sensory play structures. Um, they're also popular features that were at the Rec and Culture, or sorry, the Accessibility Commit Advisory Committee. Option three is, just, is a smaller play, play structure. 
Um, option four is uh, interactive art, similar to what we installed in around the community in 2023. And then option four, five would be no replacement at the playground. So I'm, I'm open to, for, for any questions uh, that you have. Thank you, Ms. Kluke. Um, so we did have quite a lively debate about this uh, at the committee meeting. Do we have any questions or comments at the moment? Councillor Flintoff. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. I, I went and I took another drive up there to try and help me in my decision here. And, you know, right at this particular time, I feel like a, a playground is not what the lookout tower needly, needs. Uh, truthfully said, I think it needs a bit of a tune-up. Like the handrails are very faded. There's uh, graffiti carved in with everybody's name along the handrails. The uh, steel rails are all rusted. The picnic tables, they're way overdue for staining. The flower beds. I say we should get all that part of it cleaned up and make it look like it's tourism ready. I know that's not really on our agenda, but I have to make that comment for my decision on the one that I feel that I'd like to support. That being said, I like option four, which would be similar to, if I'm right, Ms. Kluke, is that similar to the heart that says are we at Lake at the beach? Yeah, through your worship. Yeah, we would we would work with a uh, committee to do to kind of come up with some ideas and do some sort of interactive art where it involves like being able to take a photo with it, similar to the one at the beach. Yeah, because I, I do go to the beach, and uh, I'm just surprised how many people, and I see people pulling in that I don't recognize, and they go right to it, and they take pictures there mm -hmm. around that. That's sort of a tourism thing. But it has a lot of potential up there, but I was on the fence about do we need the park up there? Well, I'm not. It wouldn't hurt, but I really don't think it's something that we need up there, so I would I would support option four with cleaning up the rest of the lookout tower. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Councillor Seidel. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, through you. You know, with it being in middle of July, um, you know, even if we were to go with any kind of playground equipment, um, it would be, you know, September before it got installed when we closed in October, at the end of October, roughly. Um, I agree with Councillor Flintoff that, you know, I would like to see a little bit of a cleanup done there first, and I would like to defer this until next year um, in the spring and see what we can come up with and, and make it come to a standing committee then. So I would like to put a motion on the floor to defer this until next year's um, budget. Budget, yeah. And I so move. Um, so do we second the motion, correct? So do we have a seconder for the motion? Um, could I say something? Yes, you may. A uh, couple of councillors had their say about the park. I was just wondering if I could before we defer it, because then the motion will be... Yep, go ahead. Well, can you second I'll, I'll second it. For discussion. For discussion. Okay. So seconded. Go ahead, Councillor Bull. Okay. Thank you. At, and my original thought was to have the uh, a playground up there because I, I know a lot of people have talked to me that when they go up there, they like to have their children to be occupied to do something while they're enjoying the scenery and maybe whatever, having a picnic or whatever. But then, I, like Councillor Flinoff has said, uh, I've gone up there too, and it it does need a lot of work up there and I'm not saying it's anybody's fault that it's like that I know it's a it's a major thing but uh, we just don't have the staffing to keep that place the way it should be it used to be staffed back in the past when people looked after the gardens the weeding painting whatever and it was kept up but now with cutbacks in the past a lot, a lot of years it's just been neglected and with the 70th anniversary coming up for next year I think like Councillor Flinoff said, we should put money into fixing that place up and getting a structure or something. I'm not sure. His idea is good too, but I think there should also be something else. But uh, we have to look and maybe get a plan to, uh, to make this go forward. So next year when we open it up, it's ready for everybody to, 
to enjoy. Thank you. Councilor Mann. Thank you, Worship. Um, I guess to begin with on the deferral, I'm not, uh, I will not uh, support a deferral. Um, I believe what we're doing is we're mixing operational issues with capital. Um, some of the issues that uh, both Councillor Seidel and Flintoff brought forward are, are, are operational issues that should be dealt with through the operational budget, cleaning, maintenance, those types of things. Now we're talking about a capital piece of equipment that we've removed and isn't there. Um, I do not want to have a conversation whether we keep the fire tower lookout opened or not, because as long as we keep pulling away pieces of equipment and not replacing them, that's what we're showing the community and the visitors. This is a focal point for this community. It's not just for the residents. Anyone that has a company in town, and again, I do recognize the comments about vehicles, so assume that everyone with a vehicle that has uh, someone visiting the community, we end up gravitating to the fire tower lookout. I do not want a barren piece where there was a play structure. I think that is a very important piece of our community, and I would much rather make a decision about putting some type of play structure there. We talk about benefiting the youth. We remove this and don't put something back. We're not speaking the same language. So those are my initial comments. Thank you. Thank you. And Council Morissette. Through your worship. Um, when I talked at the committee meeting that I was not in forward to this, uh, I believe that the $102,000 or more that we would have to spend on this could be beneficial somewhere else in the community than up there. I'm still in the same way, um, but I'm also open to option four where we could put something else in there that the uh, public could use as much as they, I love Elliott Lake at the beach. So uh, I think it's more planning if we're going to end up doing something for next year, but I'm not in forward to, to this this year. Okay, thank you. Councilor Lefebvre. Thank you, Your Worship, through you. Um, I think I kudos to um, Kerry's team. I think when they went through and got quotes, they did discuss this with the, uh, the Accessibility Commission Committee to make sure if they did choose something, it was accessible piece of equipment, but I'm in, on the lines of thinking as well that it's a lot of money. Um, I mean, my son and grandson have been up there, and yes, the grandson did use the, the playground, but we also stopped at Westview Park, and the, they had a lot more fun playing at Westview Park. I think this money could be well spent somewhere else in, in the city, Westview Park, Spine, or at the beaches, so... Uh, I would tend to agree that leaving that space empty is probably not the best use of the space, so I would probably lean towards option four as well. Okay, thank you. So there's a few options that are seemingly on the table. I guess the motion is to defer. My feeling on the whole topic is that what I said in the committee meeting still kind of stands. I'm not sure we have a full plan for everything in town and including the fire tower and including all of our tourist attractions. My thoughts that, you know, maybe we should be focusing more on the bigger picture um, and maybe, you know, for these little things, number four, right that's pretty neat and it does it's a popular thing and it does support or we get support from our community um, the other ones we can still decide but there's a number of places in town that need attention and I appreciate Councillor Mann's comments versus capital and operational um, it's something to think about as well so I'm not sure where we stand with the motion for deferral. We kind of have to vote on it. Oh, do you have another comment? Okay, Councillor Seidel. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, you know, with Councillor Mann's comments, I am not opposed to 
uh, not putting anything up there. I believe that there should be something up there. I'm just trying to make reference as the time frame, this time of year, that if we do go ahead and to put something, whether it's option four, three, two, or one, we're running out of time to be able to install it just to close it for the winter. That's my comment. Councillor Flintoff. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I respect what you say, Councillor Seidel. The only thing is we defer till next spring. We're going to be back almost in the same boat. It's going to be May, and we're, this is going to come up to topic, and then we're going to decide on a session. Then it might not happen right away. Then we're in the beginning of June. Then we're going to order the parts, and then we're going to be into July. It, it just, time just seems to fly. I would prefer to make some type of decision on this tonight, and I... My comments about it needing the clean up and everything, I, I'm not here saying public works has done anything wrong. It's just an observation that I've made. And if we're understaffed there and we cut back by maybe picking option four, which will, which will, it, it's very popular at the, at the beach, that, uh, that type of a signage, um, then maybe we could hire somebody to look after that. But that's operational, so I'm not going to bring that up again. Um, so that's why I'd like to make a decision today. And uh, right now we're discussing whether or not we're going to defer this. So I don't really feel I want to defer it at this time. Okay, Councillor Bolt. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, one of the one of my pet peeves I had when I used to work for the city was that it always seemed to take forever to get a, a budget passed. You'd get it uh, done in. April, May, and you'd have no time to get things done. We have an opportunity now to get something up at the fire tower so it's ready for next year. Either way, if you, even if you get a, a, the option number four, somebody's got to design it, somebody's got to build it, it's not going to get put up there by September or, or October, probably ready for the installation in the spring. But like I said before, I, I like Councillor Flintoff's idea, but I also agree with Councillor Mann that we take if we do take a place structure out we have to put something back for the children that do go up there and that's and as for the deferral i'd like to at first i was for it but now i think i'm gonna go wishy-washy and say <laughs> get it all done for so everything's ready for the spring next year when we open okay any other questions or comments so there's nothing wrong with a deferral. It doesn't mean you're deferring it till like 10 years in the future. We can also kick it back down to committee and then come up with some better planning. Um, this will also most likely won't get done until the spring. But if we have something passed before Christmas, um, you can plan to get something in there like as soon as it's thawed. Um, so I do feel there's still some room, but if you're all ready to make a decision on one particular item right now, then that's what we'll have to do. We'll vote down that motion and then go for the next one. Any other comments? Councillor, or Mr. <laughs> Di Bartoli. Thank you, Your Worship, through you. Uh, based on the conversation I'm, I'm hearing uh, with regard to deferral um, and the concern about having uh, a play structure at the uh, fire tower lookout, a uh, suggestion I would make is that perhaps you put a deadline on your deferral to some point later this year, which you could come back and make a sound decision on what it is you really want to do up there, and then we can move forward have the structure ready to be installed at the beginning of next season and go forward from there. Just a thought. Thank you, Mr. De Bertoli. Uh, Councillor Lefebvre. Thank you, Your Worship, through you. What I would like to see is if we did, we did in fact budget this under the capital budget, did we not? Yes. Could we not punt this back to the committee to come up with other options on how we could spend that money around the city and you know make make a decision from there i guess that's part of the process that we're, we're considering i mean an, a lot of the legwork is done for these particular options 
right it's right here we know what we're dealing with um that's the tricky part like when do you start the bigger plan and adding all the other things so um councillor man then councillor flintoff um thank you your worship through you i think if if budget is going to reconvene my recommendation would be that it does not reconvene for 2024 that we're future planning for 2025 this would be an unallocated amount and again we've dealt with those types of situations as councillor bull has indicated on multiple occasions and my personal opinion is we dedicated money to a play structure this year at that location and that's what should go ahead period and again if we're going to deviate from that plan that's fine and to all the other comments regarding needs in the community we're well aware there are lots of needs in the community again this becomes for this specific target group of individuals this is a playground structure at a focal point of our community it's either we do it or we don't i'm and i think I'll, I'll just leave it at that but i don't think it should go back to a 2024 budget committee we would do an unallocated and have to deal with it next year okay thank you councilor flintoff uh thank you worship a uh, question so it, it, the deferral has it been defeated now is that no we haven't voted on it yet we're still discussing so i can okay. call a vote and okay you can okay but then i'll have to wait then okay thank you <laughs> Okay, last round. Any other comments before I call the vote? Okay, so on the motion to defer, all in favor? So that's two. So that is defeated. Now we go into a motion, I guess, to choose an option. Councillor Flintoff. Thank you, Your Worship. I'd like to put a motion out there for option number four. Seconder. Councillor Seidel. Any questions or comments? No. Councillor Mann. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, through you. Um, though I appreciate the support of uh, another local artist to have this type of interactive art. I'm not sure how that's a play structure. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Councillor Bull. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Is there any way we can pick two options or does it have to be just not to make it? <laughs> I, and I understand what Councillor Mann is saying. The, the It was for a $100,000 play structure and that's what we agreed on when we did the budget but uh, to, to me to put a hundred thousand dollar structure up there with it being in the shape it's in it's going to be kind of it's not going to look quite right until everything's all fixed up there so i'm sort of still thinking about it <laughs> if that makes sense i'd like oh well, i'd like to see both things up there in in a way but i don't know if we can divide up that operational hundred thousand that way, or is it going to be just for the play structure? I don't know. Councillor Mann. Thank you, Worship. Um, I believe that option four could be up there regardless of any discussion on a play structure. And I would also suggest that the largest of the play structures is probably not necessary at the fire tower. However, there needs to be something something in the magnitude of option three figure three that's listed in the report would be something that's more reasonable or something smaller and if this is the case then i would recommend a referral back to committee to have something come back to the next council meeting in august after rec has an opportunity to discuss this at the next meeting in august thank you councillor mann councillor bull Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I guess Ms. Kluke would have to, when she presented it to us, the uh, the reason the hundred thousand dollar option was picked was because it was accessibility accessible, and I don't think the smaller ones are that. And if and if we put something up there that's not accessible, that's not going to be good for us, right? Or is there smaller structures that 
are accessible? Um, through you, Your Worship, there, there are. They design them with just, there's like kind of like a play stand. They're all on the ground typically. They're just not as, um, there's not as much parallel play. There's just not as much to offer with them, with them, but they, to the minimum, they meet the minimum requirements, whatever we represent are presented. So whatever we can get presented are, but that one we presented and the one that was selected before was had the most features in terms of it kind of met needs of a lot of different um, disabilities. So it allowed for ramp play, a lot of parallel play. It allowed for like that metal slide. So anyone with a cochlear implant can, can use that. Unlike the static that occurs like during a plastic slide. So there's just more opportunity. The more you spend as that's pretty much the case for anything in life. But um, yeah, the, the smaller ones, they have some features, just they don't meet everything. Council vote. And just to reiterate that it will be accessible. Well, if it if there's an accessibility playground structure up there with accessibility features, it's going to be designed so it's not going to be on the sand. There's going to be. Uh, oh, I can't even draw the blank. Yeah. The surfacing and the access to it, the curbs will be gone. You'll be able to get, be able to access it easily. Correct. Uh, yeah. Through you, your worship. Yeah. Anything we. Like if we option three move forward and it was a smaller park, we would bring that back to the accessibility advisory committee for approval or vote for input um, to be ODA compliant. And they would have that minimum surfacing so that engineered wood fiber is the minimum most cost effective uh, that would be installed. And that and we would ensure that there would be no curbing. It would everything would be accessible with that surfacing. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other comments, questions? Councilor Lefebvre. Thank you, Your Worship, through you. And just to Mr. Mann's comment, I think we heard from Mr. Dubortoli when the capital budget was put together, there wasn't a lot of public input into this uh, process um, from everybody I've spoken to in this community. They think it's a lot of money for us to be spending to replace that equipment. So I think it's we also need to listen to the public when we make this decision. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm not sure we're all on the same page, so I think uh, bumping it back and getting maybe a few more options with the capital sp uh, budgeting numbers. Um, I don't feel like I like being constricted to picking one, two, one and two, one, three, or mix and match. Um, that's my personal feeling. It gives a, a little more time to get some more input, and um, I Honestly, even if we chose right now, I'd, um, would they have it in by the end of September? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, it, it depends on what playground we go with. There's there are there is a supplier that it's a four four to six week uh, wait and install. So they plan the install uh, up, upon arrival time. So there is there's other ones that we've looked at that are twelve plus weeks. So um, we should like option three or something else come forward i'd, I'd staff would bring back um something through the accessibility committee but um for the four to six week most likely uh install just because of the wait time or depending on whatever the <laughs> wish of council would be but to get that installed we could have it potentially installed if it's passed tonight uh by the end of august okay thank you so we do have a lot going on uh, besides this particular issue at the moment, um, we do have these options here. The research has been done. We could be sending Miss um, Kluk back to do more work on this. Um, and I'm sure she's needed another spot at the moment too. How much time would you say would be beneficial to... Uh, to refer this back, and when is the next Rec and Culture Committee meeting? First of August. The whole report. So it may not even be until September, the way it's looking. So, Councillor Flintoff. 
Thank you, Worship. I'm just curious. What about my motion? Is it defeated? Or we didn't. We didn't vote. Yeah. So, so the, the motion is to pick option four. So let's get that out of the way. We'll have a vote. All in favor? Two. I was defeated again. Okay. I just had to find out. Thank you. Now, does anybody want to make a motion to defer? <laughs> Councillor Morris said. Through you, Your Worship, I'm motion to defer this to the next uh, rec meeting and uh, maybe come up with a better plan than what's uh, been given to us tonight. Okay. Do we want to add a time frame? The next council or rec committee meeting is fine. Well, uh, obviously, we won't be able to get that done this year. So uh, uh, September, October, that still gives us a lot of uh, planning time to get this if we come up with an idea for next year. Okay. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Mann. Any questions or comments? Councillor Bolt. I, uh, thank you, Your Worship, through you. I think Ms. Kluke would be able to uh, tell us when she could have, not to put you on the spot, but considering the options, would a month, another month or September be all right? Or uh, I, I don't want to put this off too long. Um, through <laughs> Your Worship, yeah, I think a month or two months is fine. We can, I can come back with with something, to whatever you choose. <laughs> I, I, I'd be all right with September rec and culture meeting then. Councillor Flintoff. Thank you, Worship. Um, I just have a question. We're up here to give direction to everything. We're putting this back to Ms. Kluke, and what are we asking her to do? She's done five options here. I, I, are we going to tell her to give us another five mm -hmm. options? I'm a little bit, I'm getting a little bit like, if you want to give me some feedback, Ms. Kluke, like it's like she did a good job with all these options. What more options do we need to look at? I just would like somebody to explain that to me. Thank you. The options, I mean, for the budgeted money. So we're getting option one, two, three, four, or five. And what's come up in, in discussion here is there is potential for mixing and matching there's a push for somebody that wants to replace that capital um, piece of property. The, the budget item is for a park, but you know we could spend less on a park and still do option two, three, and four. You could have two mini parks and then a, a ropes course or the arts thing, or who knows, we may end up picking one again. But we just, I think we're taking time to make a better plan. And so that we don't discuss it like this and not know what's going on. And the next time it comes up, then at least we'll have discussed things. Um, and we clear, we'll clear up pretty much everything that needs to be looked at. There's a number of topics that have been brought up, right? Accessibility, um, what's the goal of the area, where do we want all our other stuff in, in the city, um, Right, so we have Westview Park to consider. We have all these things for the next budget. It's something just giving more time to think about it is what I'm gathering. Does that make any sense? Okay, you've explained it well, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions or comments, Councillor Philido? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through you to Ms. Kluke. <clears throat> is there any way to track the amount of traffic that goes to the fire tower lookout? I know years and years ago they used to have, it used to be manned and used to write down the, um, the name and the license plate and stuff like that. Through you, Your Worship, we have traffic counters. We do have them set up right now at the uh, I don't actually know if they're set up this summer. No, okay, they were set up last summer at the uh, trailhead. We could, we could set up and and manage. It kind of tra it tracks cars going that way. So maybe if we have those traffic counters, then we put them up before our next rec and culture meeting. We can have an idea that we have forty people in a month or four hundred people in a month, and I think. That would give us 
you know, a little bit more, Influence. would be able to make a better decision, I think, on that. So. Council Morissette. For you, Your Worship, I don't know by having a traffic count how much, how many people we're going to end up at the other end. It could be 10 people in that car or two people. How many of those have kids, you know? So, well, all we're going to know is that there's cars that go up there for, to look around and that's, that's all the numbers that we're going to get. Councillor Seidel. Thank you, Your Worship. I agree but it's more than what we have right now, so. Okay, any other questions or comments? Let's vote, all in favor? None are opposed, that's carried.